from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the legislature today has been provided by the following. The West Virginia High Technology Consortium Foundation, diversifying West Virginia's economy through technological innovation and development at the Fairmont I-79 Technology Park. Now with locations in downtown Wheeling, Moundsville, and Glenville. Connecting West Virginia families and businesses through high-speed Internet services. Learn more about connecting at Frontier.com. At the legislature today, a bill to prevent teenagers from sexting is introduced in the Senate. The bill would make sending such photos a crime of juvenile delinquency. And Governor Tomlin presented his State of the State Address last week. It was strong on education and contained bad news about student achievement. We'll talk with him about that and other issues tonight on the legislature today. Good evening and welcome to the season premiere of The Legislature Today, your source for legislative news and information from the first regular session of the 81st West Virginia Legislature. I'm Beth Voorhees. We're poised and ready in committee meetings, floor sessions, and events throughout the state capitol to bring you all the action from the House and Senate. We begin in the House. The Republicans in that body was, the influx of Republicans in that body was felt today as the first reading of the first bill on the House floor caused quite a controversy. Dave Mistich reports. The Republicans came out swinging. A bill on first reading isn't normally debated. However, the bill that would provide equal compensation to magistrates and their staff was opposed by Republicans during the floor session. Party leaders tried to suspend any further consideration of the bill. Delegate Patrick Lane introduced the motion to have House Bill 2434 rejected on first reading. Although the Republican caucus didn't get the vote to have the bill thrown out, extensive commentary was had on the issue. Minority Whip Daryl Coles began the discussion shortly after the vote came in. He accused Democrats of trying to pull one by Republicans and called it misguided. The timing of this bill, the first bill out of committee, out of the gate, a pay raise proposal put on the fast track with unusual maneuvers. When we should fast track, if anything, job growth policies or bipartisan education reform. Coles continued. Budget cuts are tough. Budget cuts are tough. Senior citizens cut. Veterans cut. Higher education cut. Military affairs and public safety cut. The Supreme Court has excess funds that you'll hear about for this pay raise upstairs already. Do you know what their cut is? Zero. None. Exempted. Following Coles, Lane criticized the Democratic caucus for having misled priorities and allowing House Bill 2434 to be the first one read on the floor. We chose to prioritize consideration of pay raises, we didn't prioritize student-centered education. We didn't prioritize growing the economy. We didn't prioritize creating jobs in West Virginians. We didn't prioritize focusing on how to put 60,000 unemployed West Virginians back to work. That is not what we did, ladies and gentlemen. Instead, we said the priority of this House is to proceed to consideration of pay raises for elected officials. Majority Whip Mike Caputo countered by accusing Republicans of grandstanding on the issue. I'm not going to debate the bill like my colleagues from across the hall has decided to do in remarks by members, and I'm not going to grandstand and assume that this body has set a priority at this point in this early point in the session. But what I am going to do is I'm going to challenge the accusations of the minority whip over there that says we tried to slip one by him. Now, the waiver of a second reference has happened many times in this body, and unless you're a freshman, 
which a lot of you are, you've seen it happen many times. The atmosphere in the House chamber was tense, and Delegate Caputo became more heated in his defense of the majority Democrats. No one tried to catch you asleep at the wheel. The motion was made to dispense with. It happened. It's over. It's done. There's two more readings on this bill. I'm sorry you're offended. You can debate the bill on second reading. You can amend the bill any way you choose on second reading. We can have a full and free debate on the bill. None of that's changed. Delegate Brent Boggs made the original motion last week to dispense with the magistrate salaries bill's reference to the Finance Committee. As majority leader, that is his role. I made the motion because the two chairs had conferred and decided that that's what they had chosen to do. Um, not unlike the process, every other time that that happens, had there been a tremendous amount of advance notice, it was certainly no secret. One person, all they need to do is object. House Bill 2434, regarding salaries for magistrates and their staff, will be on second reading tomorrow, where no doubt it will be debated along party lines. The bill passed the House last year, but failed in the state Senate. For the legislature today, I'm Dave Mistich in the House of Delegates. It's alarming to think about, but it's happening more and more. Young people taking provocative pictures of themselves and texting them to their friends. In Kanawha County, law enforcement officers are increasingly seizing phones that contain child porn. That wasn't the only legislation introduced in the Senate today to make students safer and healthier. Ashton Mara reports. Day six on the Senate floor saw the introduction of 14 new bills, covering a range of topics from Medicaid contract procedures to creating a new spay-neuter assistance fund. But two of those bills focus specifically on issues facing students, one of which is not a new concern. Senate Bill 206 repeals a section of state code that allows soft drinks to be sold in schools under specified circumstances. What we have in statute perhaps is a little more lenient toward allowing certain beverages into schools than what the Institute of Medicine and uh, the Board of Education wants to have in code. So we were simply going to remove the code, which would, in effect, strengthen uh, the uh, definition of a healthy beverage and, and get rid of sugary and, and unhealthy uh, uh, drinks in the, in the school system. Stalling says West Virginia currently has three code sections that define a healthy beverage and allows them to be sold in schools. He says he's been working closely with leaders in the medical as well as education fields to address the issue and make sure we're teaching healthy habits at a young age. We learn our habits in schools and, uh, you know, the availability of these uh, unhealthy drinks while they're on school time is, is, a, is a bad thing. So we have to continue to work with that as well as the physical activity piece so that uh, we can turn around or turn off the spigot of obesity. We, we see our kids becoming type two diabetics. And uh, uh, again, they're setting a course for unhealthy life the rest of their life. But Stalling says it may not be an issue the state even has to address. He says the federal government has passed a law that will take effect in the next six months, superseding the state's decision. So we're basically taking a, a watch and see. I've basically talked to the Board of Education, uh, uh, healthy, uh, their uh, wellness committee, as well as the, health, as the Healthy Lifestyles Coalition. And they think that the federal bill, which would preempt our state bill, is probably a better bill overall. Still, Stalling says the Health and Human Resource and Education Committees will take up the issue. While well, regulating the foods children have access to in West Virginia schools is not a new issue, advances in technology are forcing senators to now take on the issue of cell phones to protect students as well. Senate Judiciary Chair Senator Corey Palumbo of Kanawha County introduced Senate Bill 205 today. The bill prohibits juveniles from manufacturing, possessing, and distributing nude or partially nude images of minors. Palumbo says these images are commonly shared on cell phones through text messages and then sometimes are posted to the Internet for wider distribution. It's become more and more of a problem in Kanawha County where you know, these pictures...
here, and then you have someone break up with someone else, and then they send the picture on to other people. It gets on Facebook, gets on Twitter, gets on the internet, and, and it's becoming more and more of a, of a problem, at least locally. I'm not sure how much of a problem it is around the state, but I suspect it probably is as well. Palumbo says regulating the sharing of those images will help to protect students in the future. The bill will be taken up by the Senate Judiciary Committee at their next meeting. For the legislature today, I'm Ashton Mara in the Senate. Up next, we'll talk with Governor Tomlin about his state of the state address last week and the myriad of other issues he's facing. First, here's a look at some of the bills introduced in the Senate today. Among the bills introduced in the Senate today, Senate Bill 193, to repeal the article of the West Virginia Code that permits the sterilization of persons deemed to be mentally incompetent. This bill has been recommended for passage by the Joint Committee on Health. Senate Bill 196, to transfer the supervisory and jurisdictional responsibilities of the area of Cooper's Rock State Forest, known as the Trout Pond, and its immediate environs, from the Division of Forestry to the Division of Natural Resources. The bill gives the designated areas of Cooper's Rock State Forest the same status as Kanawha State Forest, except that the sale of timber would be permitted in those designated areas. Senate Bill 198 to exempt magistrates and municipal court judges from the requirement of having a license to carry a concealed weapon. Senate Bill 201 to allow for expedited partner therapy. It would permit prescribing antibiotics for the partner of a patient without first examining the partner. The bill has limited liability for medical practitioners who prescribe in an expedited partner therapy setting and allows them to prescribe without disciplinary actions from their respective licensing boards. Senate Bill 205 to prohibit juveniles from manufacturing, possessing, and distributing nude or partially nude images of minors, declare a violation to be an act of juvenile delinquency, and provide for the punishment of one year in custody. And Senate Bill 206 to repeal the section of state code that allows soft drinks to be sold in the school system under specified circumstances. There are two bills at second reading the amendment stage in the Senate tomorrow, Senate Bill 74, to replace the phrase other infamous offense with language referencing crimes punishable by imprisonment in excess of one year or any crime involving dishonesty or false statement regardless of punishment in subsection that identifies reasons for juror disqualification. And Senate Bill 116, to make it a crime to place graffiti on real and personal property. The bill establishes misdemeanor and felony criminal penalties and provides for suspension of driver's license in certain circumstances and community service. The bill provides that affected property owners may institute a civil action for recovery of damages. He is the 35th governor of the 35th state. A Logan County native, he was first elected to the House of Delegates in 1974 at the tender age of 22. He served there until his election to the state Senate in 1980, eventually reaching the presidency where he was the longest serving Senate president in the state's history. Last week he presented his State of the State Address. This week he is our traditional first guest on the legislature today. I'm pleased to introduce Governor Earl Ray Tomlin. Governor, thank you so much for being here tonight I'm on very, the legislature today. Pleased, All right, you. let's talk about education. You spent a lot of time in your State of the State Address about this. You even shared bad news about student achievement. Okay, so when all of this is done, what do you want schools to look like? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is realize the schools are for our children, our kids, our students. And the first thing, you know, there's several uh, uh, issues outlined in the uh, bill and in the, the address, but I uh, want to make sure that our children, our students are able to read at grade level in the third grade because it's been said many times that uh, children learn to read uh, for the first uh, three years in school and they'd read to learn from then on. And if our children cannot read at their grade level by third grade, they're going to be behind forever in high school, middle school, on to college. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that, that is one goal we have. We need to, to look at having uh, great teachers. We need to make sure that our teachers, especially our primary school teachers, are trained in reading so they can teach our children and make sure that our existing teachers receive that same training. We need to look at uh, flexibility. You know, in hire, our hiring practices, we need to push down more to the local level uh, and down from the state level. 
We need to look at flexibilities in our calendar to make sure that our students are in the classroom 180 days a year. And we need to make sure, starting when our uh, students are in uh, middle school, that if they choose or have chosen not to go to college, that they have some vocational training. So when they graduate high school, they can either go to a job or, they can, or they're prepared to go into higher education. Mm -hmm. So those are about five of the major things that we really want to see happen in our school system in West Virginia. You've been around enough to know that there has been a plenty of education reform initiatives out there over the years from other governors. What happened? Where did we go wrong that we're suddenly in the predicament that we're in? I think, uh, Beth, it has occurred over the last 20, 30 years in our state. Each year we come back and change and tighten up and look at the newest and most modern ways of teaching and so forth, sure. and rather than looking at, at a, a comprehensive approach and what, you know, common sense, what works with our school system. Mm -hmm. And I think the education audit really pointed that out. People have had a year since this time last year to digest what was in there, what the recommendations are. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the findings that we were one of the highest regulated states as far as education in the country. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we need to get back to, to uh, the basics. You know, let's let the, the principals and the teachers, you know, be involved with, with whether it's hiring or setting the calendar, work with the community because one size does not fit all in the state of West Virginia. And flexibility in hiring, can you get that through the unions? Well, you know, it's one of those things I think that we need to, to look at, you know, other things besides seniority. Seniority, as I made it very clear, needs to be a major role, but we also need to look at those qualifications of the teachers. Let's have input from the school teachers, from the school principal, before the hiring is made because they eventually are going to be held responsible for that school. They need to have some recommendations on who the teachers are that's going to share that responsibility. Mm -hmm. The new state superintendent of school, Dr. James Ferris, has said, look folks, as we talk about education and education reform, don't blame the teachers, mm -hmm. don't blame the administrators. Okay, then I'm not saying that we should blame somebody, but I guess it goes back to, we just didn't ignore it, but we didn't help the situation right. any. Uh, you know, I'm not sure we should be assigning uh, blame. I think okay. that what we need to do is take the high road. We know where we're at today. What we need to do is pick up the pieces. Let's go forward and let's do what's right for the students of West Virginia. Okay, let's move on to the state budget. Medicaid putting a great deal of pressure on the state budget. Right. Is there any remedy out there other than cutting benefits? Well, actually, uh, we did not have to cut. Uh, we did not have to cut the budget in Medicaid. We actually had to to increase yeah. it. And yeah, you know, there's a little bit of uh, confusion between the additional amount of money we had to put in Medicaid this year and the uh, raising the uh, the poverty level to include more people. Two separate issues. You kind of sometimes get penalized, and that's what happened to us because our state was doing better. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the federal match went down from 75 to 72 percent, mm -hmm. which uh, created the deficit position we're in this year. So we had to add uh, another 160 or so million dollars to our budget, but we were able knowing this coming in a year ago to start tightening our belts up. So we had originally predicted about a $400 million deficit. We got that down less than $200 million. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're asking our agencies to do more with less, to be smarter with the money they've got. And, you know, so we have not had to do any layoffs like any other states, but we've asked about a quarter of our uh, agencies to, to make a 7.5% cut. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the prudent thing to do. Mm -hmm. The other issues regarding your agenda is that you saw our report from Dave Mistich in the House. There are more Republicans in the House. Uh, you've been a politician for a long time. How do you think 49 of 100 seats will affect your agenda? Well, I think it's actually 46. 46. It is 46. <laughs> Thank you. But, but who's counting? No, right. no, I think that, uh, you know, I've uh, been able to uh, beat with uh, the Republicans on both sides. Uh, along with the Democrats, and, and you know, we've got a lot of issues in our state. We've got a lot of possibility here, but I think we in West Virginia need to be working together. That's one of those things that over the years I've always tried to do in the Senate, worked with Democrats and Republicans to get our programs through, and I think that we could do the same thing with the uh, in the House of Delegates. Uh, as I said, I've met with them earlier. I'll continue to meet with them and uh, to make sure that we do what's best for West Virginia. Uh, Attorney General Patrick Morrissey is a Republican. Have you met with him, and how are you getting along? I have, and uh, we're getting along fine. Uh, he is uh, obviously has to approve the contracts for all the state agencies as to form, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a backlog there, and he is getting those uh, 
uh, straightened out. I think that we have another meeting scheduled this week. So, uh, you know, once again, we uh, want to work together to do what's right for our state. He has asserted himself, uh, or the state rather, in like gun laws in New York. Now, in terms of the governance structure, a governor can't tell an attorney general what to do or what not to do, or can he? Well, uh, not necessarily, not necessarily. tell him what to do. He's an elected official, uh, mm -hmm. just as I and the other members of the Board of Public Works are. Right. However, he is a state att state's attorney, and uh, as a rule, you have a client if you're uh, going to represent the state. All right. Substance abuse. You have a new campaign. Get high, don't get hired. It sends a very clear message. But what about substance <clears> abuse <throat> treatment? This is a problem. This is why we have overcrowded prisons. Mm -hmm. What do we do for substance abuse treatment? How do we handle that? Well, as you recall, last year we talked about this issue. We had held our, uh, held our uh, forums around the state. We took, we listened to our communities, our local people. We had the uh, advisory council to the governor. They recommended uh, certain treatment programs where treatment was lacking around the state. The legislature was good enough to give me seven and a half million dollars. These programs are now getting up and starting to run. Uh, one of the, th the recommendations from the uh, Justice Reinvestment uh, Center for the mm -hmm. Council of State Governments mm -hmm. says that what we need to do is give, have more treatment, more counseling and so forth to keep our uh, inmates from reoffending when they, when they are back out on the street again. So we continue to do this. Mm -hmm. We've made changes in the way that we spend our Workforce West Virginia money that today you've got to be screened before you're trained uh, for any job. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a problem, you get yourself cleaned up, we'll train you for the work you need. So there's a lot of facets that we're working on now with substance abuse. And yet you don't want to raise taxes on cigarettes and alcohol mm -hmm. to pay for more substance abuse treatment, right? That's correct. How come? Yeah. Well, why if you don't have to? Uh, we're looking at uh, some savings. If we do the things that's been uh, the recommended by the uh, Justice Reinvestment, uh, saving of $116 million over the next six uh, years, that money can be plowed right back into treatment programs, and that's what we're hoping to do. We're looking at creative ways of coming with additional money uh, for treatment because we know what we need it in this state. You had to cut higher education amongst that 7.5% budget cuts for state agencies, right? That's correct. Requires universities to raise tuitions and fees, doesn't it? Well, yeah, once again, we are, let's, let's make it very clear, we cut no uh, scholarship program, including the Promise. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you know, our higher education programs have continued over the last, up until this year, to receive increases, and we're one of the few states that's done that. So, yes, uh, they are in that group that's going to have to tighten belts. I'm not sure that they have to raise uh, tuition, but uh, that's a possibility they have. One last question. Regarding Patriot Coal, you're aware of the bankruptcy proceedings right. of that company, and the company is trying to rid itself of pensions mm -hmm. for health care for retirees. As governor, have you intervened in this case at all to contact the company officials? I mean, what kind of an impact this would have on the state? Early on when the lawsuit was first filed, yes, I, I contacted uh, Patriot, you know, and I said I think our people needs to be treated fairly. Mm -hmm. You know, as we go through this reorganization process, you know, we need to make sure that the, uh, the benefits promised to our working men and women are kept there. So, mm -hmm. yes, I have been involved with that. I've been watching it very closely. Mm -hmm. And it could have a very severe negative impact on those retirees out there. Back to education. It says in your biography that you have been a school teacher. Where? Yes, ma'am. When in, did you teach? In Logan County teach? from... Oh, 1975 up through like 79, and it was uh, quite an experience. What did uh, you teach? Well, actually, I was a substitute teacher most of that period of time. Uh, English, West Virginia history, uh, uh, taught a lot of the business classes at uh, Logan High School uh, during those periods, and uh, uh, taught me a whole lot being a teacher. Uh, and you were a substitute teacher. I was. So you know what it is to take. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Governor Tomlin, I appreciate you coming on and talking with us. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Beth. And here is a look at some of the bills introduced in the House today. Among the bills introduced in the House today, House Bill 2518, to establish protocols and protections to help limit injuries to youth athletes and students and improve the treatment of them. In particular, the bill emphasizes the protocols for removal and return to play following concussions in sports regulated by the West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission. House Bill 2521, to provide for the prosecuting attorney of a county or duly appointed special prosecutor additional procedures for forfeiture of contraband property involved in the tracking of controlled substances. 
House Bill 2522 allowing for special license plates reading Hatfield and McCoy country. House Bill 2524 to require opioid treatment programs to report and provide statistics to the Legislative Oversight Commission on Health and Human Resources Accountability. On second reading, the amendment stage in the House tomorrow, House Bill 2434 to provide compensation of equal amounts to all magistrates, magistrate assistants, magistrate court clerks, and magistrate court deputy clerks. And this has been the Legislature Today. We'll be back here tomorrow and throughout the 60-day session to bring you all the news and information from this legislative session. Tomorrow, our guests will be the two top legislative leaders, Senate President Jeff Kessler of Marshall County and House Speaker Rick Thompson of Wayne County. We welcome your comments. You can email us at feedback at wvpubcast.org. I'm Beth Voorhees. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Day has been provided by the following. The West Virginia High Technology Consortium Foundation, diversifying West Virginia's economy through technological innovation and development at the Fairmont I-79 Technology Park. Now with locations in downtown Wheeling, Moundsville, and Glenville. Connecting West Virginia families and businesses through high-speed internet services. Learn more about connecting at Frontier.com.